that's all. Uh, uh, I was getting ready to, yeah, to yeah, get the lollipop. A uh, the... uh, oh, warm welcome <laughs> to our next speaker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so awesome. No, it's really loud. It's really... Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> so, um, second talk, uh, another lexical database, a collocations dictionary okay. for modern Slovene. Um, by a whole range uh, of authors, but his talk is going to do the presentation, right? Yeah. We'll hear, hear him loud and clear. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Um, okay, that's that's not the whole ensemble, I should say. It's a, I think the group maybe it's five times as large because there are so many people collaborating. Also because of the things I will uh, mention in my presentation, it's a... Uh, it's basically resources helping one another. That's a common theme of the presentation, I would say. Uh, but we will begin by going to the past. So how it all began. Uh, it's, it's interesting, the story with the collocations dictionary is that um, it just fell into this gap. So we presented a bit of it at Euralex 2018, but um, which was just a database then. When it was published, it was 2019, and it was already a bit old, or I should have said, um, Elexis project came along and other things had to be presented. So this, this was the first version that was published late 2018. Uh, it contained uh, nearly 36,000 headwords, uh, nearly 8 million collocations, and um, 36 million examples. We were aiming at about four examples per collocation. Now, what was new about it was really that it was collocation-centered uh, interface. Uh, it allowed different filtering options and we enabled user voting. So we were taking user feedback. Uh, I will show a bit of this interface um, later on just to show you the comparison between this version and the second version, which, I'll be, which I'm actually demoing today. Uh, what's also important, also in terms of the uh, Center for Language Resources and Technologies is that the dictionary database is available under open uh, license. Now the <coughs> methodological part was also very new and uh, so we, we took uh, advantage of the automatic methods that were sort of improved on from I think 2012 2013 onwards uh, so it, it all came together in this project and we used the combination of sort of sketch grammar uh, um, word sketches approach with Goodex through the sketch engine API and we did a, quite a lot of post-processing and I don't have time to go into more details, but it basically involved putting collocations in the right form, uh, getting rid of some false negatives, selecting structures and so on. Now that was 2018. Now what happened between 2018 and now, there were so many things uh, that affected the decisions before we made version two. Uh, starting with two research projects. So the one was f focused solely on collocations and basically dealt with uh, analyzing the advantages and disadvantages of our automatic approach, the temporal perspectives, the, the use, user perspective and so on. And the second one, the new grammar of standard slowing, at least its collocational part was focused on the methodology on sort of a new extraction method. Um, and then we looked at uh, sort of um, similar international projects that were happening at the same time, uh, reading them, reading the descriptions with interest because you learn that we all face similar problems, abundance of collocations, how to select them, which ones to select um, and so on, or which corporate to use. So it's and we also uh, look at some of the solutions in collocation presentation there. Uh, and one important trend that was coming along all these years was uh, this consolidation of language resources. 
I mean, this was a big, important step in Slovenia. It, it's done in the Netherlands, it's done in Estonia. So you, you basically focus everything around a single database and you take different resources out of that. Now, this is the model of our database. I'm not going to go into details uh, here, but it's a, you can see that all the complexity, it comes with it. But the benefits are that you can basically, you say, well, I have a collocation dictionary. I will take pieces of information relevant for me. And you take a thesaurus, you, you take other pieces of information. Now, the important part, now let's get this right. Okay, the important part are these senses here because these resources share these senses. So they all share the same pool of senses or concepts, as we sometimes call them. And that, as I will demonstrate, comes in very handy where you're doing different resources. Now, one of the things that came out of the um, all the research um, projects were several um, user studies directly relevant for our dictionary. In fact, uh, um, some of them chaired, investigated the features of the, the collocations dictionary and the user's attitudes to towards that. So in the main findings, the, they summarize all four of, um, all of these studies, or five of them, sorry. So first of all is that uh, Im the important conclusion was that users were rather positive about getting automatically extracted collocations. So it's a, it was something new in Slovenia. You, you got automatically extracted data. Uh, the, the only thing that users um, pointed out um, were, was that they want to be alerted about it and they need context. So as long as they see examples from the corpora, so they can judge by themselves, it's better than just showing them collocations. Um, then with that goes, I mean, link to that is that links to corpus data are very important. The one interesting finding um, made by my colleague Spela um, in her study was that when they are, um, when they need to, um, express their preference about ordering collocations, they in fact prefer frequency over salience. They expect frequency over salience. So this is quite an interesting finding because we are always talking about salience and all the statistics, but in the end the users when they see collocations listed in the dictionary, they think the frequency actually uh, is used to order them. Uh, now in terms of the crowdsourcing feature in the dictionary, there were mixed opinions, you know, some prefer it, some not, but that also has something to do with how the feature was used, I think, and um, we, um, we put a lot of thought into that for the second version. Now, one of the important things in 2021 was that we got a new corpus. So, it, first of all, it covered a longer period from till 2019. It, um, it got improved uh, tagging, uh, and more importantly, it got extra layers of annotation. So parsing, named entities, semantic row labeling. So better corpus, better data, of course. Now, in addition, as I mentioned earlier, we got new methodology for automatically extracting collocations. Um, this was presented at last year's Euralex, so I won't go into that much detail, but the important thing is this new formalism uh, is focused on dependency annotation layer, not, not no longer just on the um, part of speech tagging, um, and it combines uh, the restriction and representation formalism. So uh, you use corpus annotation on morphological and syntactic levels. Uh, we used 82 syntactic structures, but as I show in this next slide, where this comes really handy is that you get the typical um, information out of the collocation. So here, for example, you have financial trouble or financial difficulty, but in the corpus is, um, in nearly all the cases, is financial difficulties. Our uh, um, drop a candy, it's drop candies, and even with uh, 
adjective is in comparative form, you get better chances instead of good chance if you would just take the lemma form. Um, even more useful, the formalism comes especially handy where you have this um, uh, the a combination of subject and object. So these two relations, if you, I mean, f for the sketch engine user or for any other um, corpus tools, you will find this often to have to be a common uh, pro common error found in the collocation extraction. And the new with the new formalism, this improves considerably. Um, and there is there are different possibilities for including other levels of annotation. So this is currently in progress. So extended collocations where you add a third element or where you in fact de detect that the third element is always present. So like um, if you would have a speak a language, you would find that it's always speak English language, French language or something as an extended collocation. Okay, so. This, come, this brings me to the second version of the collocations dictionary and um, the, whole, um, uh, the whole project was started by the, the project we got at the Ministry of Culture um, led, by, led by Spiel Archer Holt and um, the, the aims of the project was to upgrade collocations dictionary and the thesaurus. There's a presentation about the thesaurus part um, tomorrow, I think. Uh, so today we're focusing on the collocation dictionary. Now, one of the important thing was that the parameters we set um, for the extraction. So the first, the first version was quite detailed in that respect. Um, we ex in, uh, examined a lot of um, lemmas. They set uh, limitations on, uh, on statistics for the syntactic structures, collocations, and so on for individual uh, structures. Here we went a bit more robust. So there were 25 collocations for colloca more productive syntactic structures. So this would be adjective, noun, um, verb, and noun, and accusative, and so on, and 10 for all others. Uh, we set a minimum frequency of four. It's a common uh, criterion used actually. And collocations were extracted for all nouns, adjectives, adverbs, and verbs. Now we, from our database, we got 138 candidate headwords. However, 81,445 met the criteria of having collocations. So all the others didn't meet the criteria of having collocations of at least four. Um, and some of them are compounds, and I will explain um, later um, how that happened. Uh, so this was this is version two. So we have eighty one over eighty one thousand uh, headwords, um, nearly four point five million uh, collocations, and more than seventeen million examples. You will notice that the headword count has doubled, but the collocation and the example count has well, nearly halved, almost halved. And this was intentional because we wanted to reduce the, uh, the number of coll collocations. That was one of the complaints from users that sometimes it's a really an overload of collocations when you open an entry. And we have 4,476 entries with sense division. Out of those, 1,608 are fully completed. Um, you're probably wondering what are the others and you'll see uh, next, uh, I will explain that. Right, so from now, this, this is the demo part, fingers crossed, okay. Um, now, uh, I will start with version one because not many are you familiar with that. Uh, I will not start with version one in fact. Um, Do I need to bring? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, but I won't be able. Okay. Oh, this is awkward. How do I get? You see? Dick? Okay. Mm 
no. Ah, okay, thanks. So this was version one. Basically, um, you you got the four co collocations per structure. Then you open the a structure, and all the filtering was done on the left, even by senses. So um, it was a slightly different display. And this is now version two, where the focus basically is. Um, it's already if sense division is available, it's shown. If if not, um, uh, you just get the stru structures and the collocations. The important thing is that um, you immediately see whether the sense division is available or not, and you see everything. So there's no extra clicking. I mean, this was part of the user studies uh, findings that uh, we need to reduce the number of clicking. So um, one of the things, if I go back, one of the, we thought it was genius at the beginning. So you see this little pyramid here. So this was in version one. We thought this will be the information we provide to the user on the level of completeness of the entry. So it's all red. It's nice. It's done. If it has gray steps, it means that it's not fully completed. Now, we did the user study, and it showed that people don't really see it. They, they miss it completely, and they don't know what it means. So we then approached it differently now, where it's clear immediately you have senses. That means it's the entry is done. If it, there's no, there are no senses, it's obvious that information is missing. Now, some of the things um, that you also have at your disposal, for example, here is that you can shrink the number of coll collocations you can see um, per entry. And we added this important feature. Um, so it's quite an for some, it's important to see the entire collocation. This is what you see now. But the option you can switch on is that you hide the head word. So then you only see the collocates. And this setting um, stays on as long as you are using the dictionary. So if you prefer to switch it to another view, you can do it at any point. OK. Uh, you also have the. Um, Examples, of course, of the collocation available on a click. Now, that is, um, this is in terms of just the general features. Now, let's talk about those um, different types of entries. There are three types of entries in the dictionary. So the first type is the one that I'm showing here, is where you, see, you have the senses completed, and you have the, uh, all the collocations checked. So that that is um, those are one thousand six hundred and eight entries. Then you have the se the second one is the semi completed entries. Um, I will show you. So for example, ah, oh, I had to select an example with Slovenian characters. Okay, but I have another one. Um, yeah using another computer. Uh, okay, so what happens here is that we already have the sense division. We also have collocations, but at the bottom, you have more of them. So what, what me it means here is that this sense division came from the bilingual Slovenian-Hungarian dictionary. The, the collocations were analyzed there as well. But all these have not been inspected yet. So if, if you're the user, you can, you can help. So I'll, I'll show how the crowdsourcing actually, um, uh, I'll show the, the crowdsourcing aspect, um, for example. I think this should work. OK, if you go down and you say, I want to, if you want to vote on the example, and you say, OK, this is a, it means a trousers and a top hat, and this is sense two, and you can select sense two 
as the one belonging to this example and that this vote gets recorded and uh, we can then use it for improving the dictionary. Um, okay, so this is the second type of entry and the third one, uh, it goes without saying, is the one where no sense division has been done, so it's fully automatic. Now the next, oh, let me just switch. Okay, I'll just leave it like that. Now this is the the um, the plans for the future. There is still a lot of work to be done. Naturally, we are lexicographers after all. Um, but what we uh, are looking forward to this uh, fall is that we are getting a new editor for the database. So this means that any um, change will be immediately propagated to other dictionaries. And we currently have a project. Um, with Claren SI, uh, where we are examining over half a million collocation candidates. So all of that will be done uh, in the next three, four months, and that will be also integrated into the database. Basically, it's a cleanup in a way. Um, we already, as I mentioned, we're working on extended collocations. So this is the feature hoping to be added uh, to the dictionary soon. Uh, then, there's something done by Croatians and in, um, I think it was an Alexico project in Germany, which is the grouping collocations by characteristics, like you put a, um, they have a questions there, or you use semantic properties, we want to use that. So the grouping is not only syntactic, but also semantic. Uh, and this is the, the last um, item here is, a, it's a currently, uh, it's a performance issue. So the idea is to have all the votes, when a user makes a vote, it's immediately propagated. So the collocation is given another status uh, in the dictionary uh, interface. Um, and thank, thank you for your attention. Thank you, stop. Um, questions, I'll start with Thank you, very interesting presentation. Uh, I have a question about um, uh, getting the full uh, collocation. Um, yes. How do you deal with inflection? Do you, uh, do you give the lemma forms of the, of the collocation or do you give the inflected forms? Or is there no inflection, for instance, between... No, 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 uh, no, we, we <laughs> give the inflected form. Yes, we, we, that's how it's extracted. That's part of the formalism. So the formalism already, uh -huh. Give the give the representation form from the dictionary. So you would, and that's especially in, Slo, in uh, Slovenian language. That's crucial because just lemmas. Um, we have you know six cases, and you need you need that uh, that kind of information. That in that is also part of the reason why we give uh, collocation in full. Yeah, so, I wanted to do that as well, but but um, in Dutch sometimes they are inflected and sometimes not. So you you need uh, to give more uh, more examples. Yes, in, in yeah. Dutch. Yeah. I understand. How do you group uh, collocations below um, individual senses? So do I understand that that this is done manually? Yes, I mean, to, we divide them to senses manually. Mm -hmm. So the syntactic part is done automatically. No, no need for to doing that. For senses, we do the manual work. As I mentioned, it comes, the information comes from different projects. So uh, someone working on a bilingual dictionary can do it already. Uh, then we had a team working on the collocations dictionary. And of course, I mentioned this last part, this is Oh, the concept is all ready. We just need time to do it, which is then the next level where you would go, I don't know, you would group um, uh, different syntactic structures, collocations, different syntactic structures, but linked somehow semantically. So um, let me think of an example. Um, uh, you would have, for example, um, different types of cars, right? And sometimes it's a, a, a car with a trailer or something like that, um, or um, uh, I need to translate it in English and find a good example. It's always a problem. Um, 
But yes, uh, uh, um, you, can, you can think of an example. Yeah, I'll think of an example. example. I just okay. We have time for one more question. So thank you, just for curiosity or for learning from from this topic. Are all inflections possible in the collocations, or is it restricted to a limited set of inflections? So more like uh, fixed expressions. Um. What do you mean by all all inflections possible? Uh, if you have two elements, can they can, um, have all possible inflection, or are there cases where you say this cannot be part of a collocation? Like if you can a collocation that only occurs in the plural, something like that. Is that yeah? Well, um, we extract the most typical form. Um, we you can get information about. Uh, we do extract, in fact, information about the diversity. So you would get how many different types of forms you get. So if you get only one, it means that it doesn't, it's not found in any other form. So we have that kind of variety of information, but that's back coded. We don't show it in the dictionary. Okay, so that's all we've time for. Yeah. Let's thank you again for a very interesting presentation, Mr. And then for the people following online, we have again five minutes for switching rooms. So.